here. We are on Mutt Lunch. We're going to break down Team of the Week, number 16, led by Matthew Stafford and Calais Campbell one more time. Let's do this. Uh, Dontrell Inman, he's an 82 with 92 speed. His route running release, catching traffic and spec, they, none of these are spectacular. They're all balanced across the board. If you have a really, really low-end team, he could be okay, but he is not going to make any rosters. Uh, but, uh, ben Heaney, Ben the Brain Heaney, 88 speed with 93 pursuit. This guy has 90 strength and 87 block shed. Uh, so he is actually going to be pretty good at stopping the run, um, especially if you maybe like the nickel uh, double A gap. Maybe if you put him in the middle, he's got 89 XL, 88 speed. For budget teams, Ben Heaney is a pretty good run-stopping linebacker. Uh, we talked about Quan Alexander, who we like quite a bit. Quan's a little more hit power, a little more zone. But this Heaney's pretty good for budget teams that want to um, MLB that stops the run. Tim Hightower, this card's a lot better at first glance than I thought it would be. With 90 speed, 93 excel, I do like what it brings to the table, but at this point in the game, there's so many backs, they can all do so much more than this Hightower can that you shouldn't really be going after this Hightower. Quinton Demps, we talked about 91 speed, 95 excel, 85 zone. There's just better free safeties out there. Uh, there's Reggie Nelsons that are going to hopefully be better than this. Uh, Glover Quinn's still a guy you want to target. Even the younger, uh, the original McCordy's uh, um, would be better. I was surprised Harrison Smith didn't get a, a item, but uh, you know he's a guy you would also like to see. Zach Ertz, too balanced across the board. Not a run blocker, not a route runner, not a spec catcher. Uh, 91 and 87 is a pretty reasonable mix. Like, this guy's pretty balanced, and he's pretty good. I don't like release uh, from tight ends, so I'm not going to, like, spend extra to get release. So that's one of his highest ratings, so I don't value that personally, unless you're going to split them out and you have something scheme-specific. 86 route running, good. Not great. I would take the Julius Thomas team of the week over him, the Jordan Reed team of the week over him. Um, I don't think it's a bad item. I think he's super balanced, but he's not for me. Akeem Ayers, the further we dug into Akeem Ayers, we liked him even more. He's got 81 play rec. He's actually got pretty high zone coverage. He's got good excel. Uh, he block sheds really well with 90. So, you know, if you're in the 3-3-5 odd from the Patriots book and you, know, you can't afford Joey Porter, you can't afford um, some of these newer rushers, and you need a guy who can hold up in the run game out there with 90 block shed, Strength a little low, but still drop in his zone with 81. Still be pretty fast with 90 XL, 86 speed. That's a reasonable mixture. Um, if your team's still budgety, this guy's pretty good. Uh, Frank Gore, nothing more than possibly a fullback dive back, but 84 speed can't have him. Uh, it's unfortunate for Frank. Great player, really had a, a one more great game to add to his resume, but not a relevant item. D'Angelo Hall. So we talked about Marcus Peters. I think the Marcus Peters has a higher press. He is going to be the better value. They're both coming in at 75 k at the moment. I would not pay that for Hall. We talked about Amerson and his zone coverage. He's got 91 speed. We talked about the new Malcolm Butler that came out. He's got 91 speed. The similarities are that they both have 90 man and they both have 90 zone. So it's pretty rare to find a guy who's under 100 k who has 90 man and 90 zone. And D'Angelo has the speed, but he loses the press. Like, uh, three speed points is is relevant to, like, 20 press points, potentially. That's that's the rating. It's not like, oh, he has five less press but five more speed. That would be amazing. But anytime you see a guy with, like, a little bit of extra speed, they usually lose, like, a lot of press. Like, one point of speed is worth seven points of press, if that makes sense. Um, I don't love D'Angelo Hall. Although, mid-tier budget, if you're building like, you know, if you're beyond the Desmond Trufants and the base elites at the start of the year, and you're past the Gilmore team of the week, the early team of the weeks, if you start to build the Peters and the Halls and uh, you go up and get yourself the new Butler, then then you're kind of in that range. But they, they aren't that next 200K high-level guys. Calais Campbell, he still gets dwarfed by Muhammad Wilkerson. He gets dwarfed by Jarrell Casey. 
He gets dwarfed by J.J. Watt. Um, I'm not a fan of his base item, and I knew going forward that his any other items he got this year just weren't really going to be relevant. I love that he's 6'8". And he's really solid. He's really good. 95 finesse. If you really want finesse move and you don't like power move for some reason, like Zan, uh, maybe you get this guy. But 91 strength, 90 block shed. That's average at this year, at this point in the game. And no thanks on the Campbell. Matthew Stafford. I am all in on Matthew Stafford. 79 speed is actually pretty decent. He's got uh, pretty high acceleration. Going to make him feel faster. 99 throw powers up there with Tom Brady as one of the best in the game. He's got 93 throw short, which I just want to see 90. 95 medium and 94 deep. He's one point better than 99 Brady in deep. So 93 deep is what Brady is. He really only loses to Brady on medium accuracy, basically, in my opinion, and a little bit of play action, but those aren't too crazy things, and plus he still has 95 medium. This Stafford, to me, he's going for 200K right now. I think he's probably the best pocket passer in the game and he's not even really a pocket passer he's not a mobile scrambler but like he, he can run on third and seven if they don't spy so I think if you need a new quarterback you look to this Matt Stafford I think he's going to be better than the Culpepper he's going to be super accurate this is a guy people are going to say this is a bad team of the week I disagree I think this Stafford at a crucial position like quarterback he's going to be a guy you're going to see all over the field um, there's nothing I don't really like about him so that's my review of the Week 16 Team of the Week. If you guys have questions on any items, uh, make sure to leave them in the comments. We'll talk about it in the chat right now. But that's my full review of Week 16, and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying Mutt Lunch.